What's up everybody, Coach John back here with another video aimed at helping you lose all the weight you wanna lose. Now, I lost 200 pounds and capped it off. Didn't always make it as easy on myself as it could have been, as I'm trying to teach you guys how to do. So today I wanna to go through specifically some of the things that I would go back and teach myself to do differently. Number one, let's just say it, you can drink a diet soda. There is no scientific evidence that it inhibits fat loss in the normal quantities people drink it. There's a study by Peters and JC et al, 2016, that gave participants 700 milliliters a day, right, that's 355 milliliters, so two of these a day. It did not inhibit fat loss whatsoever. There's a lot of BS about aspartame and non-nutritive sweeteners. I'm not saying that ultimately we, we won't look back and say, hey, these things weren't that great for us, or in some cases they were bad. But what we're talking about is using this as a tool to aid in weight reduction. We know that obesity is the biggest killer. And if Diet Coke, we don't really have proof that it's bad. It's just a lot of conspiracy theory at this point and a lot of cherry picking of research. And I was taken in by that for a long time. And that's why I never drank diet sodas previously when I would try to lose weight. And it's a shame because it's so funny when I'm not on a diet, I would drink diet soda. And it was one of those things that's like, if kind of, it's bubbly, so it helps fill your stomach. It gives you a little caffeine, so you get a little boost. For me, caffeine really helps inhibit hunger. And it just gives you a little flavor, you know, without inflaming your sweet tooth. Like a Diet Coke, there's kind of a sweetness to it, but it's subtle. It doesn't make you suddenly crave sweets. And if you do find that with say, say like a Diet Mountain Dew or something that, that tastes more sugary, like candy, you can try a different diet soda that's a little more mellow. You can drink diet soda. Number two, I would have taken more breaks. I didn't think I could take breaks. I had it in my head that if I took a break, it was time wasted. And that really wasn't the case, I don't think, because when you don't take breaks, it puts stress on your system. This is why a lot of plateaus happen. It's not necessarily because our body isn't burning the same amount of calories or it can be. This happens for a number of different reasons and people misunderstand this all the time. I don't wanna get into all of it. But when you stay in a caloric deficit for a prolonged period of time, it starts to mess with your body systems, with your nervous system and your hormone systems. And yes, these of course could affect your ability to free fat from our fat stores and metabolize it as energy, but it also just makes you feel like garbage and you're not gonna move around as much. That's really gonna add up in your daily caloric expenditure. It's one of the major causes of plateaus that people don't realize. It's just the, the amount of fidgeting, they don't get up, they don't walk around as much. And this is why wearing a step counter I think is very important, especially a cheap one. Here's a hack. Buy a cheap step counter. You know the kind that records steps even when you're just like waving your arms or something? I like that because it's giving me a better general proxy for activity. Anyways, breaks save you time in the long run and they make this journey more enjoyable because it gives your body the break it needs. People debate as to how long these breaks should be. I think at least two weeks every three months is a, is a bare freaking minimum and a lot of really smart people that I listen to say you should take a break for half the time that you were in a caloric deficit. I would say for very overweight individuals, there's maybe a different cost benefit analysis here. But the general idea is the same. The, the longer a maintenance period you can take, the better. Because we don't get bonus points for losing the weight quickly. We just wanna get the weight off and keep it off. And in this sense, patience is a shortcut. Patience really is a shortcut. This is something I would instill in myself. I would go back and I would drum it into his head, his anxiety ridden head, that the process works. There's there's psychological reasons that we don't want to believe that because <laughs> we are hardwired for survival and our brains warp our perception in a number of ways to aid our survival that don't necessarily aid our happiness or our well-being. I talk about that all the time. So I would have tried to get that through my head um, that it's all about calories in, calories out, that patience was a far more valuable characteristic than tenacity or grit or the self-abusive you know, taskmaster role with myself that we sometimes confuse for discipline. Number three, like I said, I would have paid way more attention to my non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. This is all the calories we burn in the day when we're not exercising. I put so much focus on the exercise that I kind of, I kind of let myself drag the rest of the day, especially because I was in such a deep caloric deficit. You know, maybe if I'd eaten a few more calories, 
I would have had the energy to move around more and it would have balanced out and I would have been able to take, take in more nutrition during that time. Again, back to the step counter, I would have bought this thing day one. This was like $24, right? I really would try to instill in my, my former self an appreciation of how much this stuff adds up, not only in the day, but obviously day in, day out, weeks, months, this equals extra pounds that you end up losing faster. Not so much based in effort, but just based in developing habits around staying moving during things where you would normally be stationary, you know, doing work calls, listening to a podcast, listening to a book, listening to music. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do moving or walking. You know, some people like to do the standing desk thing or put their laptop on a counter while they work. Anything like that really adds up. And just as an addendum to that, that applies to everything. I, I don't mean to neurotically seek out every little advantage that you can because that will send you down uh, you know, a path of anxiety and stress. I'm just saying if that little voice in your heart is saying, hey, do this, and, and your brain goes, ugh, well, I mean, that's not gonna magically make the weight fly off, you know? Sometimes our strategic mind will poo-poo things that our heart is telling us to do because it's dumb, because it's thinking in terms of survival, it's got tunnel vision, and it can't see outside the rigidly defined solution that we've pointed to on the horizon and says, this is the only place where we're safe, right? That's delusional. You're safe now, you're in good hands now. If you weren't in good hands now, safe with yourself, then how could you be the person who's gonna get you to the finish line, right? You're already the person who's going to lose the weight. Everybody who's ever lost the weight was the person who was gonna do it before they started. It's really a process of discovering that person and bringing them out of the muck and mire of all the negative self beliefs and the traumas that haven't been processed and the feelings that haven't been felt. That's the weight that we carry around on the inside that manifests as the exterior weight. So I teach him to listen to that voice, you know, that heart voice or the soul voice, the true self, the inner spirit man, you know, the whisper of the universe or God, however you want to think about it. We all know that, that that still small voice is there and it can be so easy to distract away from it or drown it out in, in any number of ways. But if it's telling you to do something small, hey, small things add up all the time. It could be telling you to do something small because you're new and small steps are the appropriate steps for someone who is new to something. They call them baby steps because if babies tried to take a step that was bigger than a baby step, they would fall and they would fall and they would fall and they would never learn to walk. And we would just be a species of slugs crawling around on the ground with probably really overdeveloped jacked arms and like little wispy squid-like tentacle legs. Who wants that, right? That's, that's us trying to drag ourselves through life, you know, thinking, oh, weight loss is so hard. Well, yeah, when you never developed legs. If you start taking baby steps, You'll actually learn to walk and then you'll learn to run and then your whole life's gonna be way easier. And you're gonna be looking at other people who are dragging themselves up the side of a mountain with only their fingernails and complaining about how hard it is and you're gonna realize, oh my gosh, what are we doing to ourselves? Baby steps help you cross the gap between where you are currently to where you want to go and they help you cross the gap of, of what you're incapable of doing. Because it's not about that you're truly incapable of it, it's that your method of relating to yourself and the actions that you choose to take on, those have nothing to do with actually crossing that gap. They have everything to do with this rehearsed story that's that we've carried with us since childhood because this was how we solved problems back in the bad times when our personas developed and this was what was allowed to us. If you developed a self-defeating aspect to your personality in childhood, it was probably because your needs weren't being met. You weren't being cared for the way you deserved. So your options were limited. And that's the, that was the problem. Your success at everything in life has come through those limited narrow range of options because you've kept this story up that those are the only options available to you. So the list of things where you've succeeded are all due to those few options. But if we actually compared that to the list of things we failed at because of the tight, the, the rigid tunnel vision view of our available options, we would see that that list is far greater and we all know that. And this is why we're so afraid of failing. So widening your options. When that voice says, hey, why don't you go for a walk right now? And you're like, but it's raining, how could I do that? And it's like, yeah, rain doesn't stop you from walking. It's just 
water that falls from the sky. And then you're like, oh, but, 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 and then you actually sit with it and you're like, oh, why do, is it that big of a deal to walk in the rain? I guess not. I mean, they make rain jackets for a reason. And then all of a sudden you go out and walk in the rain and you're like, oh my gosh, I seriously didn't think I could walk in the rain. And that may sound like a like an oversimplified example. Man, when you start realizing the extent <laughs> that you have been confined in this in this needlessly tight menu of options, there are gonna be some laughably obvious things. I mean, I just figured one out today related to how my wife and I parent our kids. You know, we usually run a tight ship, but there are certain areas where we were getting our butts kicked for the last couple of years, and we're just like, the answer is so obvious. We didn't think that we had the options to maintain a certain boundary at certain times because because the downstream effects had to go perfectly A, B, C, D. It's like, ugh, who cares about A, B, C, D? Like, let's fix the problem and enforce the boundary and then everything's gonna work better because we're gonna be healthier. And then A, B, C, D takes care of itself. We don't have to force weight loss. We don't have to try to control circumstances to force the pounds off. That's the rest of the world's way of doing this. That's not my way of doing this. I hope that makes sense. Basically what I'd go back and tell myself is John, take the easy way out. Because every time you ask yourself frantically, what do I do next? The answer is the easiest thing, dude, the next step, the one that's right there in front of you. And I would sit there going, well, I can't take that because childhood trauma, childhood trauma, right? So I keep recreating the this, this childhood circumstances of neglect and abuse in my own life. And this just continues to cause circumstances and relationships that trigger me back into that experience on a fundamental psychological level. And so I'm always tricking myself into thinking that the things I'm choosing in life are traumatizing me. And this is how we get around to, oh, well, I, I've been on diets before and it does, doesn't work. Dieting doesn't work for me. No, dieting will work for you. Anything in life will work for you when you learn to take the easy way and stop listening to the, when your brain tells you you have to do it the hard way. Everything has to be the hard way. The easy way, the obvious way, is not available to you because dot, 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 dot. We could go down a lot of rabbit holes. I'm gonna restrain myself and stop the video there. If you have questions or any of this really piques something for you, let me know in the comments and maybe I can do future videos on that. You know, we started very practical with diet soda and then we ended up with sort of the secrets to the universe and human experience. <laughs> and that sounds about right for me and what you'll see on this channel going forward. If you're looking for no cost support, head over to the Facebook group, Lose Weight with John. We're just about to start a weight loss challenge. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, I have a variety of programs that I've set up now for people at different budgets and who have different needs. And if you wanna know more about those, you can email me at johnoakscoaching at gmail.com. Obviously, I'd really appreciate a subscribe and a like on this video. It really helps YouTube decide to finally start pushing these out. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video.